I am reading this cue card for the first time. So, with the election having happened and COVID a repetitive story, many are wondering what, again, is the deal with Prince Harry and Meghan Markle? And also, people are thinking, who cares? And at the same time, the crown is on. Which brings us to a segment called Royal Watch, News from the Real Life Crown. Yeesh. And here with that is our friend, oh, uh, okay, John Mulaney. <laughs> Welcome back, buddy. Thank you, Seth. Thank you, everybody. Uh, you know, I've been on this show many times, but it's kind of surreal to be the guest on Royal Watch, News from the Real Life Crown segment. I'm not mad. I'm just curious. Why did you write it this way? making it seem like it's a recurring segment. Is it to justify you wanting to talk about the royals or an ego thing of you wanting to feel like the guest who was chosen to be on this fake segment? I think probably both in a way. Does that make sense? Well, we're in it now. So what do you have to say about Prince Harry and Meghan Markle and Netflix is the crown currently? Okay, okay. It's weird. Uh, or don't you think it's weird? that Prince Harry and Meghan Markle, they left the royal family, and they're like, oh, this will be the story of the year. And then COVID... When, when did they say that, though? Did they say this will be the story of the year? No, but people said, you know, this is a big deal, you know, which it is, it's a huge deal. Start again. Okay. Oh, real quick, you met Prince William and uh, Kate Middleton, excuse me, Mrs. Middleton, at... Uh, an event once, or you saw them at an event? Which was it? Yeah, we were in a, a fundraiser for uh, St. Andrews, yeah. What's that? It's the school they met at. It's a university it's a, in Scotland. It's a king and queen school? <laughs> had a fundraiser? <laughs> in the United States? Yeah. <laughs> That's whack as <laughs> man. Uh, what, what did they act like? Um, they, they were very, no, they were very pleasant, and uh, my wife still talks about how uh, Kate had the best, uh, like, table manners she'd ever seen. Like she could get one pee on a knife. Was she eating like Charlie Chaplin? Why was that happening? <laughs> I remember you sent me a, he said it was nice. He sent me a photo of their placement card at the table. He dines with royalty, I get a JPEG, whatever. <laughs> Listen, I'm so jealous of you for meeting them. I've never told you that. Okay, resetting. I think that it was a very big deal that Prince Harry and Meghan Markle left the royal family because that family is proper, and you have to literally, have to literally be dressed nice to be in the house. The Crown is a good show, because it shows them fighting and packing trunks and drawing baths. And you think, well, the fake Queen Elizabeth is a human being, and, and the fake Windsor family has fun drama. But when you look at the press and you see the real life family, it's like you never hear about any of their problems. I totally disagree with that. On what grounds? The media and society, at least here in the United States, has an appetite for gossip and hearsay about the English monarchy because scandals and public fights are, in fact, frequent. Sarah Ferguson, the recent deeply troubling accusations about Prince Andrew and Jeffrey Epstein. And that's not even touching the grossly public and endlessly discussed marriage, divorce, and death of Princess Diana of Wales. Yeah. But you, uh, you, know, you know it's weird, right? <laughs> that Meghan and Harry left? Like, what? You thought rolling with those dorks in church clothes was gonna be fun? <laughs> Had you been told it was nonstop laughs? Because you're thinking of the Munsters, you silly goose. You're yelling at who here? Her, the Meghan Markle. Okay. Yeah, just the fact that she wanted to leave the royal family because they were like, be proper and sit so. There has never been a point in my life where I did not know that the Queen of England was strict and not fun at all. So don't marry into the family with the most jive-ass boring people ever, and then be like, oh, should we play Never Have I Ever? Well, I mean, there is a difference between one's expectations about a life mm. and the reality of living yeah. that life. I mean, she may have factored in what you were saying, right. but then day to day realized it was suffocating. Yeah. yeah. That's, that's true. Okay, so forget, I want to take, uh, not take it out, don't remove it, but I forget what I said about Mrs. Markle, the Duchess. I didn't mean to criticize her. The real dunce <laughs> of this fairy tale is bring Prince Harry has entered the chat. You dumb ginger. You leave your title because you don't like your 94-year-old grandma. Um, that's the definition of something you wait out, gangsta. Pretty sure Father Time was gonna sort out the case of the very old bummer <laughs> woman who had 30 months to live. Uh, too mean, too mean, too mean, too mean. Also, Seth. Harry's mom was Diana, as in Princess Diana, mm -hmm. who 
though through divorce, so it's different, also wanted to escape the House of Windsor. One would think Prince Harry would have a realistic perspective on the difficulties of being a royal. I like, you said that very well. Could I use that for Royal Watch? <laughs> or, or I guess we're, <laughs> yes, it's a huge deal that they left. And they thought everyone was gonna care, Meghan and Harry. And then people did care, but then the story totally got eclipsed, and now people talk about it less. First off, two factors. You had Trump being president, which was a thing every day. And then COVID hit in March. Well, COVID was spreading as early as, as early December. As early as December. This is the Seth Meyers news. I know that, okay? I'm not, I'm not chronology smart. I'm good, I'm smart with words, smart with language, you know? Well then, spell the word sheriff. <laughs> Get out of here. <laughs> You know, can't say. <laughs> of all the digs. Everything closed in March because of COVID, or most things. Things in the NYC did. Some things did. So this big stunt <laughs> is suddenly like, what are you talking about? <laughs> like, we're dealing with a disease here. And then they're like, they get nothing. Look at this. <laughs> Look at this. Look at this headline from Cosmopolitan. Prince Harry and Meghan Markle didn't publicly wish Prince Charles a happy birthday. And then the sub headline under it. <laughs> It says, it's possible that Harry chose to wish his father happy birthday privately. <laughs> Someone had to type that. That sucks so much. It's literally nothing. <laughs> I think like me, you are a complex person. I appreciate that. Thank you. But despite your complexity, you are so satisfied by the simplest things. Oh, an epitaph if I've ever heard one. Thank you for that. Indeed, I am simple and difficult. Next up, this story sucked but was also great. <laughs> This is the, read this one. Princess Eugenie moves into Frogmore Cottage. <laughs> Prince Harry and Duchess Meghan's, you, who did what and where now? <laughs> Can you picture this at some dinner party? Like, oh, Princess Eugenie, where are you living now? And she goes, please call me Huge. I'm living at the Froggy Doggy Castle. <laughs> it's like, get out of here with that. <laughs> it sounds like, it sounds like there's a lot of media coverage of Meghan and Harry and that you read all of it. Well, you can't avoid it. I mean, the Google News every day, it says, these stories for you are... Yeah, but those are stories for you, based on your searches. Like, those are not you as in everybody. As in the royal you? Pun intended and planned. But, wait, the for you on Google News, you don't get, you don't get my... Or do you, does anyone get the same ones as Jasper? All right. No, see, it's an algorithm that provides the content you like. Like, what's the number one story for you on Google News today? Today was uh, Mulaney Q&A with Michigan State provides laughs, albeit virtual ones. See, I didn't get that story. Oh, I'll forward it to you. No, but it's a student reporter, so like they have to find something to criticize, you know? Anyway, I think I've proved my point just now because only I know about Meghan and Harry because of an algorithm. So if it wasn't for combining all my personal data into one pool, I wouldn't get that collected and they wouldn't deduce I want news on kings and queens. Harry and Meghan would be uh, a bigger story uh, if everyone was like me, but everyone is not like me. You think? I think. I think. I guess what I'm here to ask is, somewhat rhetorically, is it as interesting to you as it is to me that there is a royal family? England has a national family that gets dressed up in costumes. But also, do you somehow kind of want the monarchy to survive? And is that why I like The Crown on Netflix? Because it's a throwback to a time that I did live through, but I was a baby or I was a little kid. The Crown shows how miserable life can be as a monarch. That's true. And so in that light, I can see why Harry and Meghan left. So I guess it's not, it's not weird. It's of note, I guess, but it's understandable. And there is press coverage of it. Yeah. But not as much as the presidential election or the worldwide pandemic. Yeah. I don't mind, I never mind having you out here. But in the future, if you want to talk things like this out, a phone a call maybe. A phone call maybe, yeah, is better? Be better. Yeah. Okay. You know, we'll see what of this we can use, but, you know, fair warning, it, it might be oh, yeah, online, online only. only. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, that's, that's fine with me. I, I appreciate the, the time. I think we're short, but uh, I do...
thank you as always for giving me this platform. Yeah. And uh, the next Royal Watch will be a little more focused. <laughs> Just a lot going on with those Windsors. Thank you, Seth. And as a student reporter once wrote about me, thank you for the laughs, albeit virtual ones. We'll be right back with Amy Adams. And then Adams Adams. <laughs> <laughs>